Welcome to this week's episode of The Follow-Up. I'm here with Pastor Adam Jackson. Thanks for joining us today, Hey, Adam. no problem, Carrie. So we're super excited to dive into a quick little summary, if you would say, of In a Pig Pen? In yeah, the in, the, in the Pig Pen. Yeah. What a creative title. I, I just have to ask, how did you come up with this title? Yeah, so really kind of riffing off the whole series theme in the valley. So in the pig pen is really based on, as we look at the whole series, by and large, it's the circumstances we find ourselves in that are outside of our control, you know, those trials in life, the difficult things in life. And this week in particular, looking at Luke chapter 15, uh, the story of the the wayward son, um, looking at those choices we make where we get ourselves into our own mess, where we find ourselves in situations in life because of our own sin where we have our own stink that we are carrying because mm-hmm. of foolish choices. And so, yeah, that's where where In the Pig Pen uh, came from as we look at Luke chapter 15. Such a creative title. Definitely caught my attention. So to kick things off, we're going to do a 60-second summary. And we got yeah. a timer. We got okay. a clock. All right. Oh, so, man. I know. Oh, man. I'm going to do Timers a countdown. Timers and pastors. Okay, okay. <laughs> I know. So in three, two, one. One. All right, so we looked at Luke chapter 15, just the well-known story of the prodigal son, but really looking at how it's really the story of the Father, God's love for sinners, and and really looking at, as we address our own failures uh, before God, three key areas uh, for us. Um, First of all, a proper acknowledgement of sin, right? That um, grace does not excuse sin. Um, secondly, that um, we have to have a proper understanding of grace, that grace is um, not disqualified because of our sin. And then thirdly, the rightful response and understanding both sin and grace is to repent, that when we understand God's love for us, even when we've royally blown it, that God embraces that man, we need to run back to him. Um, and, and really that beautiful picture in Luke chapter 15 to actually see that it's God that runs to us. <gasps> Look at, we had our How little ding. <laughs> yes, you got it just All in right. the nick of time. That's fantastic. So as you were prepping for this, there were lots of different things, that, different directions that you could even go in or just different things that you were learning as you were going through scripture in Luke 15. What were some things that did not make the cut for the actual 30 to 40 minute allotment of time that you wish you would have, or you just want to share about today? Oh yeah. Good, good question. So, I mean, we looked at, I mean, the entire passage that we read was that passage that talks about the whole story of the prodigal son kind of going off to the distant country, coming back And we read the portion about the older brother, who's pretty ticked off that his younger brother is getting the royal treatment, even after he's blown it. We didn't even cover the older brother at all. And and really looking at that whole idea of um, almost looking at what he deserved. He had similar mindset of the younger brother that he was just toiling away, not really doing it out of a love for the father, really looking at what he had to gain. Like, dad, your younger, your younger son went out and he squandered everything. And here you didn't even give me the car to go out with my friends. I mean, basically that's what mm-hmm. he's saying. You haven't given me the goat, you know, for my friends and me to party with. And so that attitude that comes towards sin as well, where there is kind of this idea that, hey, I'm not as bad, I'm okay. And, and so really even addressing that mindset in, in ourselves that it's so important that when we think about this younger son, a lot of times when we talk about sin, we can think about someone that, oh, yeah, I know someone that really blew it. I know someone that really made bad choices. They were unfaithful to their spouse. They cheated on their taxes. They did something, oh, that was really bad. And those things that we've done we kind of, we make excuses for, well, it's not that bad. Well, that's your typical sin. Well, everybody does that. And really, as we look at the pig pen, it's, it's the mindset of doing anything that goes counter to what God would have us do. And so really addressing the pride in our own heart, you know, that's the biggest thing we all struggle with because pride will keep us from seeing ourselves as we really are, right? Pride always makes us think that, hey, we're doing pretty good. And so in looking at Luke chapter 15, what are those areas that in my own pride, um, I am excusing certain behaviors, certain attitudes um, that really 
they stink. <laughs> and, and I need to address those and acknowledge what God has done for me and turn from those things. Mm. That's really good. And even the question that you asked of like, where in it in my heart am I wrestling with this? Or I'm thinking I'm higher and wrestling with that pride and bringing back to more humble state yeah. of recognizing the true part of who I am, the sin and all, and then choosing to repent and turn from it. Right. That's that's such a good thing. And thank you for talking on that too, because I feel like that's a portion of this piece of scripture that gets overlooked sometimes. So thank you for being able to share on that today. So from from the sermon and as you're looking at, okay, now we're into the week or past the day that this came out, where do you see people taking their next step? Yeah. Yeah, I was say a couple a couple things real quick. If I if I had to summarize, you know, it's based on what do you acknowledge, mm. right? So to acknowledge your own sin or to uh, make excuse for it, um, to acknowledge the grace of God or to ignore it um, is so big. And then what do you turn from and what do you turn to? That's going to decide this week. You know, if, if getting through this week is all about turning to whatever is going to make you happy, is going to kind of numb the anxiety or anything else, and you're turning from God, um, man, you're, you're heading towards the pig pen, mm-hmm. right? And if you are just making excuses and turning from acknowledging what is true, as bad as things are, are you know, in your own failure and your own sin, and making excuse for it, you're turning from the God that will receive you. And so this week, I would say, as you examine your life to look at, hey, what am I acknowledging? What am I admitting in my, my own life? And then what am I turning from? What am I turning to? So we want to be turning from our sin and turning to God and not turning from God and turning to sin because you can have it only one of mm-hmm. either one of those ways. You're turning from something and you're turning to something. So this week... What does, what does that look like? What are the choices that are being made? What a great thing to end us on. Thank you, Pastor Adam, for right. being here with us today, and we will see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching this episode of The Follow-Up. If you missed the full-length sermon, you can go ahead and click it right up here where you can go back and watch the entire thing so you don't miss out. And can you do one more thing for us? Could you go ahead and like this video and then leave a comment? Can you let us know what stood out to you or what is a takeaway that you have from this episode? And don't forget, if you never wanna miss out on every single episode of The Follow-Up, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. And we'll see you in the next one.